So today we're going to cover the chapter known as salts. And in this chapter, we're going to study how to prepare salts, how to choose reactants, and how to describe the method. Right? Okay? So I'm going to jump straight in. Right? And first things first. Now, what is a salt? So a salt is an ionic compound that is made up of a cation, right? usually metal, uh, and an anion. So the cation doesn't always have to be a metal. It could also be an ammonium ion. All right? And I will cover this a bit more later. All right? uh, and a salt is formed when the hydrogen of an acid is replaced by a metal ion or an ammonium ion. All right? So now salts are prepared when you add two reagents together. All right? One reagent must contain the cation and the other one the desired anion. Okay, so there are three methods to prepare salts, titration, precipitation, and what I call the excess method. All right, so now to figure out what method to choose and to use, you need to do it in this order. First, you must be familiar with the solubility table. And then you can go through the flow chart, which I'll cover in a bit. And the flow chart will help you to choose the method. And once you know which method, you will then be able to choose the reactants. So it's solubility table, flow chart, method, reactants. All right, okay. So let's cover the solubility table first. Now, you need to recall um, that there are two chlorides that are insoluble. So most chlorides are soluble. Only two of them are insoluble. And this is lead and silver. I memorize it as L and S for like lao sai. So it's a bit, it's a bit gross, but um, it's insoluble, right? So L for lead and S for silver. So both lead chloride and silver chloride are insoluble in water. Okay, so L and S. Okay, now sulfates, there are three of them that are not soluble, and this forms the word uh, CLB. That's how I memorize it for like Chinese language B. All right, so CLB. All right, and C is for calcium, L for lead, and B for barium. So there are three sulfates that are typically insoluble, and the most of them are soluble. Now we talk about nitrates. All right, there is no such thing as an insoluble nitrate. All nitrates are soluble. So all nitrates are soluble and you have no insoluble nitrates. Now we have carbonates, okay? So most carbonates are not soluble. So when you put it in water, it will not dissolve, all right? So most carbonates are insoluble. We have a few of them that are soluble. This forms the word SPA, S-P-A for sodium, potassium, and ammonium. So SPA and any other group one carbonate, so things like lithium, uh, rubidium, casium. Okay, so these carbonates are soluble. Uh, finally, um, oxides and hydroxides are not salts, but I've just included them here. All right, so these are, if you recall, oxides and hydroxides are bases. Okay, so soluble bases are once again spa, and we have two more ka for calcium and ba, ba for barium, and also anything else in group one. All right. And most oxides and hydroxides are insoluble. So that's your solubility table that you want to memorize. Okay, and just in case you're not so sure, soluble means it can dissolve in water, state symbol aqueous. Insoluble means it cannot dissolve in water, state symbol solid. All right, okay. Um, now, so that's step one, solubility table. Now, once you memorize that, you must move on to what you call the flow chart. Now, this flow chart is kind of missing arrows, so I'm going to get you to add that in. So first things first, when you come across a salt, you want to ask yourself the very important question. Is it soluble or is it insoluble? Now, if the salt is insoluble, all right, it is one of the three sulfates or two chlorides or most carbonates, we will use the method known as precipitation or ionic precipitation, right? Okay, ionic precipitation. Now, if the salt is soluble, then you want to check if it's spa or non-spa. If it's sodium, potassium, ammonium, all right? So for example, sodium chloride, sodium nitrate, sodium sulfate, or potassium chloride, nitrate, sulfate, or ammonium nitrate, sulfate, chloride, all right? If it's a spa salt or group one salt, we will use the method known as titration. And if it's not sodium, potassium, ammonium, and it's not in group one, then we will use the method known as uh, the excess method. All right, okay. Uh, in some schools, we call this crystallization. Okay, and once we figure out the method, remember, we move on to uh, the reactants. Okay, so once you do the method, we will then move on to reactants. Now, for titration, we will typically add an acid and an alkali. All right, or we can add a soluble carbonate. Okay, 
for the excess method, we will add acid plus excess metal or carbonate or base. So M4 metal and C4 carbonate and B4 base. And finally, if it's uh, insoluble, if it's ionic precipitation, then we add two reactants that are aqueous. Now, it really doesn't matter what they are. It could be an acid, it could be an alkali, it really doesn't matter. As long as they're aqueous reactants, they will work. All right, okay? So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to uh, run through a couple of examples for the soluble salts first to show you how to choose the method and the reactants. Okay, so let's find out. So here we have a list of uh, soluble salts. They're all aqueous, all soluble. All right, so we have no insoluble, we have no precipitation. All right, okay. So for example, copper sulfate, we know it is soluble and we know it is non-spa. Okay, so this type of salt is something that I get students to do so that they know what method. If it's soluble, non-spa, we will use the excess method, also known as um, crystallization. Okay, and the reactants, we will use an acid and a metal or a carbonate or base. Okay, now how do you choose the acid? So here comes the uh, trick question, all right, or, or the million dollar question, all right? Now you look at the anion, but to choose the acid, we look at the anion. If it's a sulfate, we will choose sulfuric acid, okay? So H2SO4. And I'm going to say it here, we choose acid by looking at anion of salt, okay? If it's a sulfate, we will choose sulfuric acid. If it's a chloride, we will choose hydrochloric acid. And if it's a nitrate, we will choose nitric acid. All right, so that settles the acids, okay? And uh, for copper sulfate, number, for this metal, we can choose a metal or a carbonate or base. Now, copper metal will not work because copper metal is unreactive. So we must choose either a carbonate or a base, an oxide or hydroxide. So it's up to you really. You can choose copper carbonate, all right? Or you can choose copper oxide, or you can choose copper hydroxide. And they will all work well, all right? Okay, so those are your reactants. And in your o level exam, this is worth up to three marks, all right? So, uh, especially for the combined camp students, all right? So the excess method is one mark. And then if you choose your reactants correctly, that's one mark each, all right? So that's up to three marks for now, okay? Um, Next one for iron 2 chloride. Iron 2 chloride, we know that most chlorides are soluble, right? So soluble. And iron is once again non spa It is not sodium, not potassium, not ammonium. We will use the excess method, all right? And for the excess method, we will choose an acid. In this case, because it is chloride, we will choose hydrochloric acid, okay? So HCl. And we will choose either a metal or a carbonate or a base. And because iron metal can react, Iron metal works, or iron carbonate will work, or iron oxide. All right, it's iron two, so it's FeO. Okay. Uh, now let's move on to potassium sulfate. Potassium starts with P, so it's a spa salt. So it's soluble spa, soluble spa. If it's soluble spa, the method is known as titration. Okay, and titration you must use an acid and an alkali. So to choose the acid, we look at the anion. In this case, it is sulfate, and therefore we will choose sulfuric acid, so H2SO4. Now, if you're not familiar what alkalis we have, I'm just going to scroll back up and add it in for you. Okay, so alkalis in our syllabus, I kind of mentioned this earlier on, but I'm just going to repeat myself. Uh, we have um, sodium hydroxide for S, we have potassium hydroxide for P, and then we have aqueous ammonia, all right, aqueous ammonia. These are your soluble hydroxides, and they are found here in the solubility table. Okay, uh, we could use calcium hydroxide and barium hydroxide, but but uh, not very common. All right, so most because it's spa salts, we will choose either sodium, potassium, or aqueous ammonia. Sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, or aqueous ammonia. Okay, and so uh, for potassium sulfate, all right, uh, we will use one of the alkalis, and the alkalis will be potassium hydroxide, K-O-H, all right, okay, so uh, when you add sulfuric acid to potassium hydroxide, you will get potassium sulfate, all right, moving on, all right, so here we have A, spa salt, all right, so soluble spa, 
right? So if it's soluble and spa, we will use the method known as titration. We will use an acid because it's a nitrate, we will use nitric acid, HNO3. And because it is ammonium sulfate, we will use aqueous ammonia. Right, okay, so that is how you choose reactants. Okay, uh, four more zinc sulfate. Now, to prepare zinc sulfate, uh, zinc is no longer spa. All right, so zinc is not spa. So, if it's not spa, it is soluble and non spa. And we will choose the excess method. All right, and we will then use an acid and metal or carbonate or base. Sulfate means we will use sulfuric acid and we can use zinc metal zinc carbonate, zinc oxide, or zinc hydroxide, and they will all work fine, okay? Uh, for magnesium chloride, once again, it is non-spa, so soluble and non-spa, and the excess method, all right? And here we're going to use chloride, and therefore hydrochloric acid, magnesium, magnesium carbonate, magnesium oxide, all right? So very quickly, just to go through that again, for the excess method, we will choose an acid, and a metal carbonate base. So because it is chloride, we will choose hydrochloric acid. And then we can choose either magnesium metal or magnesium carbonate or magnesium oxide. All right, so that's a base. Silver sulfate. So silver, careful, it starts with S, but it's not spa. The S in spa stands for sodium. So silver sulfate is soluble and non-spa. All right, okay. And once again, we have the excess method. All right, and here we have uh, sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Now be careful, uh, silver metal will not work because silver is unreactive. Now just to give you a short list, copper and silver and gold, all right, these three metals will not react with acids. Okay, so we will avoid, or we, we cannot use them. If you put it into an acid, there will not be any reaction, all right? So silver metal will not work, uh, but silver carbonate will, so Ag2CO3, um, or silver oxide, Ag2O, all right? It's uh, important to note that silver is an Ag plus ion, and therefore, that's how I came up with the chemical formula, AgCO3 and Ag2O, all right? Um, last one, lithium nitrate, all right? So lithium, now this is a bit of a trick question, all right? So once in a while, these kind of things come out. Uh, it's not spa, but it's group one, all right? Um, so recall, if you scroll back up to the flow chart, all right, if it's... SPA, or if it's in group one, then we will use titration, all right? Okay, so here we will use it's soluble and SPA or group one, and therefore we will use titration, okay? The acid is simple because the nitrate, we will use nitric acid. Now, question, what alkali will be used, okay? So um, if you go back to the solubility table on oxides, we know that SPA, carbar oxides, and hydroxides are soluble, and also group 1. So for group 1, uh, we have things like lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and lithium is right there. So an alkali is usually a soluble hydroxide, so lithium hydroxide. Okay. So I hope this has given you a better idea on how to choose reactants uh, and how to arrive at the correct method. Okay. Now I did not cover insoluble salts, so I'm going to do it right now. Okay, so what happens if the salt is insoluble? Now, if it's insoluble, the method is known as ionic precipitation. All right, and uh, some students struggle at choosing the reactants. So I'm going to teach you something that's not quite covered in schools. All right, and I call this the branch method. Okay, so uh, to choose reactants for ionic precipitation to make insoluble salts, we apply what I call the branch method. All right, if you don't know what an insoluble salt is, here we see a diagram of a white precipitate. Sorry. A white precipitate in a colorless solution. Okay, so uh, and how we apply the branch method is this: we take the name, the cation anion, and we split it into two. We branch it out. So for barium sulfate, for example, to choose reactants to make barium sulfate, we'll branch it into barium something and something sulfate first. All right. Now, what do we use? We need the barium compound to be soluble. And if you recall, all nitrates are soluble, and therefore. The easiest option is to go with barium nitrate because that's soluble. And um, what sulfate is soluble? There are actually probably like a hundred of them, all right? Um, you could use magnesium sulfate, um, iron sulfate, copper sulfate, as long as it's soluble, even sulfuric acid will work. But I like to narrow down my options. I will stick to spa, 
okay, because all spa salts are soluble. So I will stick to sodium, potassium, ammonium. And I'm just going to go with sodium sulfate. Okay, so once again, um, to make silver chloride, I will split it into silver something and something chloride. Now, which silver compounds are soluble? Re recall once again, because all nitrates are soluble, it's easiest just to put a nitrate in front. All right, and because all spa salts are soluble, it's easiest to put a sodium or potassium chloride. So I'm just going to go with sodium, right? And after some examples, you realize that the combination of nitrate and sodium will always work. All right, okay. So for calcium sulfate, I will split it out into two. I'm going to branch it out. And which calcium salt is soluble? You could go with calcium chloride. You could go with calcium nitrate. Right? Both will work fine. So calcium chloride is aqueous. Or I'm just going to go with calcium nitrate to keep things really simple. All right. Uh, in your exam, you want to try and narrow down your options so that you, you really um, study a lot lesser things. All right. If you, if you keep changing the answers, yeah, it's fine, but um, then you need to be very flexible in your thinking, right? So, and what sulfate? Well, um, for for variety, I'm just going to go with sulfuric acid, all right? H2SO4, that's aqueous. Will that work? Yes, it will, because it's a soluble sulfate, all right? Uh, but if not, I'm going to go with my standard textbook answer, sodium sulfate, that will work just fine, all right? So to make calcium sulfate, we add calcium nitrate and sodium sulfate. All right, the calcium and the sulfate, when they meet, they will form calcium sulfate. Okay, uh, lead carbonate. Okay, so uh, for lead, we are a bit limited because lead chloride and lead sulfate are insoluble, so we only have lead nitrate. And for carbonates, we have sodium carbonate, potassium carbonate, ammonium carbonate. All right, uh, most other carbonates are insoluble. Okay. So the carbonates, we're a bit more limited, all right? I'm just going to go with nitrate and sodium, all right? And finally, iodides, all right? So same thing, if you're not so familiar, uh, oops, sorry, there's a typo there. This should be an iodide, it should be I. Um, I'm going to go with iron nitrate, NO3, all right, two. And I'm going to go with sodium iodide, why? Once again, because all spa salts are soluble. So uh, this branch method will help you to choose reactants to mix uh, to get your insoluble salt, right? So just to give you a bit of idea, all right, um, let's take barium sulfate as an example, all right? To make barium sulfate, all you need to do is you take a test tube of barium nitrate and you add that to another test tube of sodium sulfate. When you add them together, you will get a precipitate of barium sulfate. Now, barium sulfate will not be the only product. The other product, of course, will be the other two ions, all right? The other product will be sodium nitrate, so plus NaNO3. And so what you will see is you will see a white precipitate in a colorless solution. The barium sulfate is the white precipitate, and the sodium nitrate is the colorless solution, all right? And that's why uh, something like that usually comes up. You get a precipitate in a colorless solution if um, you're not dealing with transition metals, all right? transition metals, you get colored solutions. Okay, so um, I hope this has given you a better idea on uh, number one, what method to choose and then what reactant to choose for a salt preparation question. And I'll see you next time.